Kalm, thank you for joining us today. When you think about everything you have been through as a patient, what does it mean to you that you can be involved in helping kidney researchers and innovators around the world to better understand the impact of the disease on people and help to develop new therapies to help reduce or end suffering for others? I've seen both as a child and as an adult um, what kidney disease does to a person. Um, I was um, 12 years of age when I, when I went on dialysis um, and I was in dialysis. There were four exchanges a day um, for, as I said, approximately two years before I was, I got my first transplant. Unfortunately, that transplant um, never functioned and it was, the kidney had to be replaced within 48 hours, taken out. I went back on dialysis again for another eight months before I got my successful uh, kidney transplant. Uh, and I was very fortunate that that lasted for 22 years. After that 22 years, unfortunately, again, I um, ended up going back on dialysis. First of all, I went on the four exchanges day again, and then I moved on to hemodialysis. So I believe with my experience, um, I would have a lot to offer. Um, I believe that kidney disease is, it's like a glass of water if you think about it. Um, you actually have, um, if the glass is half full, people are going to look, is it half full or half empty? Where your innovators will often think, okay, maybe, why can't we just refill the glass of water up to the top? And I think that's why it's so important, having been through it yourself, that you can actually give that advice to people that are hoping to make a difference. Um, statistics and everything are great, but not in beats talking to a person who's actually been through it themselves. And not in beats life experience. Um, when you have when you have that, I, I often kind of believe there's no such thing as um, as a bad day. You have good days and good days brings you joy and happiness, but bad days actually brings you life experience. So when you come across a bad day again, you'll know how to deal with it. What does innovation mean to you? And how do you think kidney patients like yourself should be involved in innovation when it comes to new medicines, therapies, and treatments for people with kidney disease? Um, as I say, I can only draw on my own experience. Um, I remember when I was um, diagnosed first back in 1988 and I went on dialysis, I was getting um, blood transfusion approximately every three weeks. And as we all know now, getting a blood transfusion when you're hoping to get um, a kidney or any organ um, increases antibodies, which is a big no-no. Um, just from my, my first time to the next time, to think that that was all done away with and I was using EPO to bring up your red blood cells. That to me was just a, a small, small change that made a huge difference to my life instead of having to go into a hospital for every three weeks for a blood transfusion. It was something that was either injected myself or it was given in through the dialysis machine. Like, um, dialysis itself, look, it's, it's not easy. Um, it's, it can be an awful burden, but you've got to make it work for yourself. But dialysis hasn't really changed an awful lot since its inception, really. Like, there's different variations where you can do your four exchanges a day, you can do your nighttime dialysis, you can do home hemo, or you can do hemo in the hospital. But I think, I'd like to think that we could do a lot more for people. And the main thing would be is to try and keep people out of hospital. So I think with, with the way science is going and everything, I think AI is a big thing and I would be looking at something along the lines of something that we could maybe implant into people to kind of uh, do the work of the kidney. It's not going to replace the kidney, but it may replace the likes of dialysis. That's what I would like to see. Um, you will still long term, you will still obviously need um, a kidney, but just for dialysis alone, no. Um, I believe that's the way forward um, because where kidney diseases can be very debil debilitating, it's 
you still got to live your life and not everyone is fortunate enough to be in a position where they get paid to be off work um while they, while they're ill people have to work so by giving them giving them their their freedom for better word um that would be the biggest change i could see um that are that i would like to see happen um when it comes to to kidney care at the moment you know in the short to medium term um a kidney is obviously going to be um much harder because you're dealing with a, when you're dealing with a kidney you're dealing with a filter for basically as opposed to the likes of a heart and i'm not demeaning one organ against the other but at the end of the day a heart what you're dealing with is actually a pump which is something that can re be replicated whereas a kidney it's not as simple when you're dealing with a filter so i believe that that's what i would like to see happen on myself is is something that could be implanted maybe with the use of artificial intelligence to be able to guide that kidney to to do what it's required to do Colin, you are a very informed patient and you also work in the pharmaceutical space. As far as being a patient and a consumer of healthcare, how do you think advocacy organizations like AAKP, the Kidney Association in Ireland that you are involved with, government agencies and industry can work together and bring patients to the table? I think from a, um, a pharmaceutical point of view, I think um, even someone going in that, that actually has had a transplant, um, and just speak to the people inside her, even if it's just to speak to everyone that's on the floor in the general forum. Like, um, a lot of people will go to work and they just see it as a job. But when you're on the receiving end and you're actually um, taking the medication that's actually made, you require them, you, I suppose you see the importance of it, really. Like, and I think that's important too for the people that are working there to show that, um, these would it be capsules or or tablets they're actually made um they're just not they're not a statistic that that that, that pack has, has gone out the door to someone you see face and i know with the new systems with, with medication you can track and trace the company can track and trace to see what basically what chemist and all that it goes to so i think by seeing a face who has been through the whole series from start to finish like if you are if you are lucky enough to get a transplant and be taking that medica medication i think that opens um i think that opens people's lives uh, and their eyes sorry um to realize that there's a lot more going on than, than just doing your day's work like people might not appreciate it but it is actually their day's work is actually life-saving um like receiving a kidney is the greatest gift anyone could, could ever give you. But at the end of the day, that gift will only work if your medication is working and obviously you're taking your medication. So by showing someone, and, and even if it is a case of you're, you're talking to someone prior to getting a transplant to see how ill you are and maybe six months afterwards to see the difference in the person, I think Sometimes a picture speaks that uh, is worth a thousand words, and by seeing someone like that, I think that would be huge from a pharmaceutical point of view. Just to, I love the phrase um, "education is key and knowledge is power." Um, I often say that to people uh, in our own support group. By educating people, you're giving them back the power to take control of, yes, of their own life or of their own medicine. Really, like. Um, because a lot of the time here, people are, they're like rabbits in the headlights. Um, that's why I love meeting people that are newly diagnosed and you just, you take the fear factor away. And that's why advocacy groups and the AKP, Kidney Foundation, that's why it's so important that there's really, really made information available for anyone who wants it. Um, and it just really does, it, it just takes the fear out of it. Like, because in this kidney disease, to me, like it's it's eighty percent mental and twenty percent physical. If you're in a good headspace, you're going to get through. If you are struggling, it is it is a slog, and and, and there's no easy way about it. Like you are going to struggle big time. 
How important is it for patients to raise their voices and create the demand for new diagnostics, devices, and biologics? Um, it's a tough one because we probably don't really get the opportunity here in Ireland because we're probably so far behind the um, United States. Well, um, I suppose in a, in a slight way, I'm, I'm kind of jealous because I see all the work that's actually been done over there. Um, and the AKP is at the forefront of everything, um, which is, is fantastic because you're you're aware of each and every development that's, hap that's happening. And yes, I know you don't want this to um, be premature with good news in case something goes wrong. But it's great that you actually, you are at the forefront of things like uh, whether it be legislation or whether it be um, companies uh, trying to provide new new ways or, or areas of exploring how to do things differently. Um, I think that's that's where we, uh, people should be at. Um, and it gives people a sense of purpose as well after your transplant. Uh, a lot of people like to give something back um, and help people, but there's no better way than helping the people that have yet to be diagnosed by for a better word, you being a guinea pig, maybe. Um, whether it be um, taking part in studies, clinical studies, or or just filling out questionnaires, it all helps. And that's why the AK is so, AKP, sorry, excuse me, is so important. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're in the United States or what part of the world is. This is information is key and it's always there. And it's there on a regular basis, constantly updated, and you can't put a price on that. How do you feel an international consortium led by patients would help kidney patients in your country? Um, as I say, we are quite a bit behind the United States. Um, we're for the last two years trying to push through leg legislation to have altruistic donors because we're not actually allowed to have those in Ireland. And we don't have, um, they were trying to bring in an opt-out system here as well in Ireland. But um, there's a, there's an argument, and I kind of agree with this. If you're going to have an opt-out system, maybe you're better off having a register of who wants to be a donor. Um, so, as I say, we are so far behind uh, with where we are. It's, it's probably a very hard question to um, answer from my point of view in Ireland. Well, all I can say is probably maybe repeating what I said already, is that it's it's vitally important to be at the forefront of things. Um, companies need people who've been there, been through it. Um, I, I previously said statistics are fantastic, but you need people who've, who have experience who can give the proper advice to say yes or no to this. Um, this will work, this won't work. And then you get a, a wide variety of opinions. Now, the great thing about having people from internationally is that chances are in every country, no one's at the exact same, like uh, what would say, um, pace is probably, the wrong, is probably the wrong word to use. As in, we'd be so far behind the United States, but the UK would be ahead of us. So every, everyone's at a different, uh, what would I say, junction, I suppose is the word you'd use. Um, so everyone's learning off everyone else. Um, no one said there's a right or wrong way, but the day you stop learning is the day you close your eyes, to be honest. So um, there's always room for improvement. Do you feel it will bring kidney disease on a larger radar and push for things to happen more quickly? Yes, I believe so. Um, there is nothing like a global voice. Um, it's like one country could be beating a drum and if it's not, um, if no one's believing what they're saying, um, it kind of gets lost. Whereas if you have a collective group internationally, um, People sit up and take notice and they're going to listen to see, okay, what is this group on about? Um, what we, what can we do to help them? Um, and I think at, at times 
the big problem, I, and I've even noticed myself with um, with kidney disease, people think, okay, you, I call them, you've been lucky enough, yeah, you've had the transplant, and uh, you're basically you're fixed. That's the end of it. Well, like a transplant is, is still another form of treatment, no matter what way you look at it, because you're taking meds. So you're constantly um, learning. You're trying to maintain your your kidney, and um, you're watching your diet. All those things are are constant, and that's a constant for for people all over the world who've had the transplant. So already this this. There's so much to have in common. So then the more you have in the group, the more collective ideas you have. And sometimes it, there might be something that you never thought about and someone from another country would, and it it, it rings the bell. And, and sometimes maybe it sets a chain of events that could come to something amazing. Um, and you never know unless you have the conversation. I like how you talked about being a guinea pig for those who are newly diagnosed. Can you share how it has helped you as a patient to know that others have been through similar experiences? Um, I'll tell you, I might actually go the opposite way if it's okay with you, Aaron. I might actually speak from my experiences from helping others, if that's okay. Um, just just a, a simple thing like in our own local support group, um, we had a lady um, came in and she was, um, she was an elderly lady and she, she was absolutely petrified because she heard she had to go on dialysis. Now, I'm a big believer. I'm, I'm a guy in my 40s. There's no point in me to speaking to someone in their 70s because they're going to think, what would he know? He's a young guy, plenty of energy. He's fine. There's no point in talking to him. So you got to kind of, for me, match like for like. So I was able to call on a leader that had the transplant and she was similar in age. Um, and that evening, we sat down in, inside in the house. We had a chat, and I introduced her to this other lady. And she was able to sit down, talk her through, talk her through all her fears. Lady, the lady that was um, going on dialysis was petrified about the fistula. So she was able to see what exactly a fistula was, and she was kind of thinking to herself, what was I panicking about? Um, and we have our meetings once a month, and then the following month, she was on to her husband, could she go again? The following month, she came again, and she asked more questions, which which goes back to my education is key and knowledge is power. Um, and within a few weeks, she um, had a fistula, and she rang afterwards to thank us for what we did. No, I don't need thanks. I probably get more out of it than, than those people do, being able to help people. But that's just a very simple way of how you can help someone. A lot of it's just fear of the unknown. And if you can take that fear out and people know what's ahead of them, it, it makes life a lot easier for them. Like, and that, as I say, that's just a very simple instance. And we've had many of those. Colm, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your perspective as a kidney patient and for all the great work you do for kidney patients in Ireland.